Hello everyone, today we will be talking about the design of Banished, which, which is a fairly new game. Uh, I don't often buy games, sort of, when they're just released, but it was 18 or 19 euros or whatever, and I felt like a sort of chilling game. Um, so if you haven't heard of Banished, it's basically a city or town uh, planning game. The main focus of the game, well, the entire focus of the game, is just building and expanding and making sure your tiny people have a good life. Um, it's a lot like the, um, at least the old settlers. I haven't really played any of the newer ones, uh, though I played uh, the second one a lot. The main difference between this and settlers is um, you will have to take care of your people, and the people have homes, and the people need food and stuff like that. Um, at least what I remember from Settlers is that you basically got people for free. Um, like if you built a, a blacksmith or whatever, a guy would just show up, and you had a certain number of people to start with. Um, I can't quite remember what it was, but today we will be talking about Banished instead of Settlers. I just thought I'd sort of uh, compare it to a game, because that's the easiest way of letting you know the basics. Um, so you basically build different structures, as well as farms. You build pastures for animals, as well as orchards with trees, and you chop wood for firewood uh, to keep people warm during the winter, and things like that. So, the basic flow of the game is you start out with just a bunch of people at the start. Um, depending on uh, sort of the difficulty, there are three different options uh, when you start the game. Um, it's sort of starting conditions, uh, but what it does is it mostly uh, sort of uh, puts you back a ways. Like the hard one, you start with just a couple of people and some food, I think. Uh, it's a card here, I can't really remember what is on it. Um, and then if you sort of survive for a while, you reach the normal uh, starting conditions and then the easy starting conditions, uh, which include uh, a couple of animals as well as uh, sort of seeds to create farms, which you can't do unless you have the seeds. Um, but then every uh, every single game tends to sort of follow the same uh, the same layout or the same flow because once you get to a certain point in the game, let's say year 10 or whatever, you basically have your food, your firewood production, your um, you have a couple of builders or a couple of free uh, laborers that you can do whatever you want with. Um, and from that point on, you will basically not be challenged um, there are a couple of different sort of bad things that can happen, like fires and disease and um, um, your farms getting uh, plagued or infested with stuff. Um, so basically once you reach a certain point in the early game, which you can do in a couple of hours easily, um, you will basically have the same game uh, from that point. Let's put it here from that point to the end for as long as you keep playing will basically be the same regardless of the game. The biggest influences on this is uh, obviously the layout of the land uh, which forces you to sort of build in different directions because mountains stop you from building and rivers um, you can't obviously build in a river except for fisher fishermen huts uh, but you can build bridges across rivers and you can also build uh, tunnels through mountains. So you can obviously get around the sort of challenges. Um, so the every single game tends to sort of play out the same way. And the first years are kind of the most uh, fun, to me at least. I have one city that's something like 500 people in it. Uh, which is kind of the furthest I've played. Furthest, the farthest. Um, so the mechanics of the game is you don't really control the people themselves. 
you only control the um, the workers as you can see down here in the professions tab um, you control the workers so you can tell people to do different things um, you can plan out the buildings and roads obviously um, as you can see here the houses are paused which means you can sort of uh, create a layout without having to commit the materials and the working hours which is very useful for big buildings like the marketplace in the top right here uh, because this means that you can plan out for big structures uh, because the buildings aren't quite uh, aligned to a certain sized grid um, which means that you'll have to sort of puzzle to make everything fit so you start out with the big buildings and then you sort of build houses around them because houses are the smallest buildings but yeah, um, you obviously have resources, um, as you can see in the sort of top left there. Um, you have sort of different materials. You have uh, wood or logs, stone and iron, which is used for mainly buildings. The iron is used for tools as well. Then you have um, firewood, um, which is used to keep houses warm. Um, coal which is mostly used for uh, making tools as far as I know then you have food at the bottom here and the game doesn't really distinguish between different sorts of foods I think um, people get happier or healthier uh, which you can see here at the bottom this is health and this is happiness um, and I think they will be less happy or less uh, feeling less well if you have only one or a couple of sorts of food, but I'm not quite aware of how it works because the game doesn't really tell you. Uh, but yeah, you also have herbs which increases health, tools, clothing which increase um, the tools increase people's working speed. I think uh, the clothes make them use less firewood in winter, I suppose, and then you have. Um, alcohol which makes them happy I think so there are a bunch of different resources to keep track of um, and then you also have your people at the top here so the left one is um, workers which is basically the people you can assign to projects in the professions tab you have uh, the second number which is people who are being educated and then the last one is children, which don't really do anything except eat food. Uh, but yeah, the professions is pretty much where you'll be spending the most amount of your time, as well as planning. Uh, because making sure that you have sort of sufficient number of workers in the different jobs uh, is the core of the game, pretty much. Um, there are a few which are... Um, sort of set because you need a certain amount of people to always work food as well as uh, do uh, forester which creates logs and woodcutters which create firewood um, you sort of need a certain amount of them to always uh, keep up with the food so you don't sort of run out and then you also have a couple of jobs like the teachers um, the physicians and clerics at the bottom here oh wrong layer or whatever um, which you you will tend not to sort of use them for anything else so the people you're pretty much working with um, at least in my opinion tends to be the laborers which are not assigned to anything which means they will walk around and do um, things like cut down trees, uh, chop up stone if you need it. They will carry things uh, like building materials. Uh, they will chop down trees uh, on building sites like this one. This is going to be a farm here, I think. Uh, so there's a guy who chops down the trees that used to be here. Um, so basically the people you have to work with are those. Uh, since this is my big city, uh, I have quite a lot of them so I have 20 people um, in some cases like in smaller cities you will also not be using um, these people here uh, maybe not even those 
um, and those um, the miners and stone cutters uh, miners give you iron and coal and stone cutters give you coal or stone obviously um, so those depend pretty much on the resources you're currently needing um, so those sort of categories are optional which means you will be moving people between them depending on what you need uh, in some cases you might not be building anything so you move them into uh, making tools and making uh, stone and stuff like that um, but eventually you will just have uh, enough workers to do uh, whatever you want to pretty much um, yeah here is uh, what I mean with the work cycle is that um, you won't be able to have workers to uh, do everything all the time. Instead you will sort of be moving them around. Um, obviously I took the big city which, which is a bad example because as you play the game and you get further and further the cycles uh, get less important because you just have more people to work with. Um, but basically what you start with is expanding. Uh, at the start of the game you will not be having um, sort of individual houses um, at least if you start on the hard setting you will have to build uh, one of the big houses that keeps a lot of uh, families in them um, and when you build individual housing one male one female will uh, tend to move into e each house and this means that they will be producing kids um, as soon as you build let's say you build these six houses one family will move into each of them and they will all have kids pretty much so the next step is yeah the kids here um, the kids since they don't do anything and they eat food mean that after expanding you will have to move your workers into producing food for a while um, which means that um, you will not be able to sort of keep expanding at the same pace all the time because you can't have people both producing food and uh, sort of doing the work so once you uh, these two should be changed actually. so once the kids sort of grow up you will get extra laborers which means they can produce extra resources which allows you to do the next sort of cycle so it should be expanding kids food laborers resources and expanding again um, because um, no, wait, I'll do that on the next one if we open up this one the escalation of complexity um, and here is one of these big houses with a lot of people in them so the first step when you play the game is you obviously need housing because otherwise people will be freezing to death in winter you need food or they'll starve to death and you need firewood because otherwise they will still freeze even if they have a house and this also means that you won't be having to sort of keep track of all the resources uh, when you play the game or when you start the game um, because at the start you will need wood you will need uh, firewood you will need food and uh, some stone to build houses as well even wood houses require some stone so that is step one and the next step is tools clothes and herbs um, the clothes are sort of less important than the other two because tools if you don't have any tools at all you will everyone will work slower even the guys making tools for others which means you will sort of run into a weird situation um, but yeah clothes is mostly to save on firewood at least that's what I think it does. Maybe it allows people to be out more in the cold as well. Um, it's sort of hard to keep track of what things actually do in the game, but I will get to that later. Um, you also have herbs which increase health. Um, it's sort of a way to get rid of diseases and things. Um, I actually have never played a game where I didn't get herbs. Um, it would be interesting mostly to see what happens um, the next uh, step is school church and town hall 
Um, at least this is the order in which I build stuff. So the school uh, takes kids at a certain age and then it teaches them for a certain number of years um, and once they reach a certain age they will be graduated or whatever and they will become uh, trained workers um, which I think just work faster doing everything um, but the school obviously needs someone to work in it um, which means that if you have a really low amount of workers you won't be able to keep up with it the same goes for the church which increases happiness uh, it also takes a guy the town hall doesn't take any guy but it takes a lot of materials um, but what the town hall does is it allows you to sort of track uh, these statistics like how much did you produce um, how much did you use for your year things like that for every single resource um, so it's very useful to have but it's not a requirement um, I'm not sure about the church either because I haven't played a game without a church um, so that's another thing to test out and then you have step 4 which um, is a quarry, a mine or two mines if you want both iron and coal um, iron can actually be harvested because it's in rocks above ground um, so at first you only need one mine that mines coal you can also switch production uh, between the two um, and the quarry and then trading as well um, the reason why trading is so uh, down on the list or so expensive is because you need a lot of materials available to trade uh, if you're buying seeds like wheat for instance uh, they cost uh, 2500 uh, arbitrary units which is something like 600 firewood um, six yeah depending on how they value the firewood but it's quite a bunch in the early game the trading post doesn't really need a lot of workers one is enough um, but yeah since you need resources to trade away it sort of yeah it's sort of expensive in that reason uh, the quarry in the mine takes a lot of workers to fill up and since both iron and stone is available on the ground uh, you won't be needed to build these until later and uh, obviously as you expand you will also have to go back to the number one here to build more houses more food production and more firewood production um, the tools and the clothes you get by with one quite a long time um, so the game goes from fairly simple to quite advanced uh, pretty quickly actually uh, as I said before in a couple of hours you can probably reach number four here um, which sort of gives you most of the buildings in the game um, and you sort of reach the point where uh, most cities tend to look alike um, there's also a difference between um, sort of forest production versus farming um, in farming I also include um, things like pastures uh, with animals as well as um, what's it called the trees uh, which produce uh, apples and pears and whatever um, so the difference between the two is that when you start out a game um, the hunting cabin and the gatherers lodge is uh, two of your best buildings pretty much because you just plonk them down and since you have no buildings around them um, you can't see it here because I don't have anything uh, tagged I'll just uh, quickly merge layers so I can draw on them but yeah, every single building, um, let's see here, I think this is a gatherer's lodge, has a sort of distance around them that defines uh, the area they're working in. Uh, it's not pretty, but you get the point. Um, and within that distance, you can't have um, other structures because then your uh, production will go lower. At least I assume that's what happens because you don't get any sort of stat on this. 
Um, and it's the same for hunting, which is here, uh, herbalism, and this is a forester's lodge, which basically plants trees. You can actually get rid of things like uh, iron, stone, um, to increase the production of the uh, the tree planting because you have more available spots in them for plant trees planting trees um, but yeah the forest is good when you have a lot of space but then you will want to move on to um, sort of more organized farming production um, this is a shitty screenshot because it's raining but up here there's a pasture uh, then you have farms Um, and then at the bottom here you sort of have housing um, because what's good about farms is that you can build housing uh, like just next to it which means that your workers will have to travel um, a shorter distance to get to work uh, because since you don't want to build things near your forest structures you will have to have the houses all the way over to the left uh, to not in or to not decrease the production of your forest buildings. Um, you will also run into a different problem with this because once you start uh, wanting to expand let's say your city or town with your core structures are over here to the left when you want to expand you will sort of be building into I should probably be drawing with another color let's go with green. So once you start building structures um, you will basically um, reduce the production of your um, your forest buildings that you built before until you basically have to demolish them because they are of no use anymore um, but if you build farms on the edge edges of your city like in this case you can just keep expanding uh, because um, obviously you will not reduce your uh, production yield just because you have other um, resources or other buildings nearby. Um, there's also another problem with the uh, food production in that you pretty much have no real knowledge of how much one of uh, any given uh, building sort of produces because as you can see here um, you can see uh, previous season how much they produced so in this case I have four workers in each, one is a crop field, one is a fishing dock. Um, so you can see previous season, which uh, there are four obviously, and you can see current season. Um, the problem is that once uh, your current seasons end, it becomes previous season. So you can't see, um, you can't see sort of two uh, two seasons behind which means that you will never be able to uh, properly compare this because the current season might just be two days uh, of production um, so in this case previous season squash um, did worse than fish but uh, squash also only produces in um, in autumn I think because that's when everyone harvests the squash which is sort of weird because it has two seasons. Um, I think fish produces in winter, but again, um, it's kind of hard to know because the game doesn't really give you uh, any good way of tracking it, even though you get this screen with the current and previous season. It would have been better if it had like a year and you could see um, sort of comparisons because I think in some years, like if it rains a lot, your crops will be worse, but fishing will keep the same uh, most of the time. Um, I'm actually not quite sure about how this works, which is one of my sort of issues with the game, which we will be getting to next. Um, so one of the issues is worker distance, because you can't control which workers go where, which means that um, someone who lives over here and wrong layer as usual um, so someone lives in this house over here 
but they're working way at the bottom here. Um, this is mostly a problem because people will sort of walk to their deaths um, as well as obviously being inefficient um, because uh, people will um, they're not clever enough in the AI system that they will be stopped from sort of walking to a distance where they will starve to death before they get back to their house because for some reason people can only get food at their house or they can only eat food there just like it's the only place to stop from freezing to death so if they walk away uh, too far they will die before getting back to their home which is uh, sort of a problem um, having people walk too far to their jobs is um, obviously also a problem because uh, it's inefficient and there is as far as I know no way to stop them from being randomly assigned um, one fix to this would be to just sort of reassign people to the closest working place I don't know once a year would probably be enough um, or a couple of times um, because the second problem well not because this is a different thing uh, is that you can't really build roads um, over things like hills and stuff as you can see here the road cannot be placed in the location where people are walking and uh, movement on roads isn't fast enough to make up for people sort of walking randomly um, and this also means that if people start walking sort of across hills here it means that there's nothing you can do about it because you can't build roads to make them walk faster this is a stone road which is the fastest way of traveling um, and this also means that if you can't improve their speed going from their house to their working place um, the only thing you can do is sort of try to build new houses at the bottom I suppose to make people try to work there and demolish the only ones yeah this is just the walking to death problem that I said before this guy is hungry and he's going uh, to his home to eat which is uh, really far away even though uh, a few of these are food production buildings there's a pastry here at the bottom um, and things like markets and storehouses that have thousands of units of food isn't enough to keep people from starving to death right next to them um, there's also teacher death which is sort of a weird problem um, because as someone dies uh, which happens pretty much randomly they can die from old age they can uh, die from random accidents and things like that um, if you do not have a free laborer to fill up the teacher slot when they die uh, because if you have free laborers one of them will just take the teacher slot and everything is fine and dandy but if you do not um, the teacher will die and every kid who is currently being teached by that teacher will become an unskilled laborer and there is no way to get them back into school after that happens um, which means that at first you had no free laborers and then suddenly you have a ton of them and those all the time they spent in school is basically wasted because um, you the teaching part is uh, binary which means you're either taught for the entire period or none of it uh, because it's just a tag um, that says this guy has been in school um, so sort of um, prioritizing certain things like the teacher which means that if the teacher dies they take first a builder then a farmer then a herdsman depending on where you have your people um, would pretty much solve this problem as well because building will never be as important as having someone in the teacher slot um, yeah there's also uh, harvest jobs which means that if you tell people to harvest a lot of rocks or trees or iron um, 
This means that even though you've put, let's say you put all your people in the builder slot and then you set a sort of big uh, harvest command, no one will actually be building anything because they will all be busy harvesting. Uh, which is also sort of weird to me because, um, at least as far as I understand, the laborers are supposed to take care of the harvesting and the builders take care of the building. Um, Obviously, if you don't have any materials, like if you're out of stone, it's fine for builders to go get the stone, but it's kind of weird to me that they do so, even though they're uh, sort of full on stone. So the game has a couple of small issues, but it's not anything big enough to really uh, make the game worse, um, because once you run into some things like the teacher death, you will basically never repeat that mistake again and always keep a couple of laborers. Um, uh, oh yeah. One of the improvements that I would recommend is to just have sort of uh, hover text boxes or something that says educated and if you hover over it, it says yes. And then it just gives you a stat like works 10% faster or clothing, if you hover over this, because there are several different levers, levels of clothing, there is no clothing, there is uh, basic leather, then there is basic wool, and then there is leather plus wool. Uh, so you have four different levels, and it would be great to see uh, what each of them does. And there are two uh, types of steel, or two types of tools, steel and iron, and I also have no idea what they're doing. And it would also be good to sort of be able to hover over people's health um, or happiness if they're unhappy to see what sort of would make the problems better. Because as of right now, you can click on someone and it says he has two and a half health and you have hospitals and stuff and no one ever goes to them. Um, so just a bit more feedback would be nice. Um, as well as as I said before, better feedback on the production of um, how sort of um, food production works. Just because, sure, previous season was great, current season will never be that great because once you reach the end of your current season, the old one goes away. And even though this gives you sort of different, um, different food stuff, um, it will still just count as food. So having these different slots would... Uh, it makes less sense to me than showing uh, several seasons back, like the entire year or compared to last year or something like that. Because um, you obviously can't compare between um, between different types of uh, food producing buildings if you don't really have any sort of good stats. And another thing I would like is seeing how much of the sort of available area that the uh, building is using. Uh, the circle is actually sort of more visible in this one. It goes something like this. And it's probably um, at the bottom here. Uh, so just showing you a stat that says it this building is 76% uh, useful because there are buildings, and there are mountains, and there is a river. Uh, just giving you sort of feedback, and if you build a building, it changes to re reflect how much of the um, possible food production that you're actually living up to. So, some minor improvements. Um, the game is, as I said, it costs 18 or 19 euros. Um, and I wouldn't actually recommend it unless you're really into this sort of city building because it's so free and the games tend to uh, become really similar once you get to the certain point, uh, like I said. Um, it's mostly sort of a chill out game for me, like if I don't have the focus or energy to play something like Dota 2 or Battlefield or uh, one of those more action games. It's something to play like at 9 in the evening when you're just sort of uh, run out of energy. 
Um, if it goes down to 10 or 12 pucks, I would probably recommend it to everyone because uh, so far I've played this for maybe, I don't know, 30 or 40 hours, which is uh, sort of great value. Um, if we put the sort of break even point at one euro per per hour spent, this is still a pretty good game and you'll learn to sort of deal with the minor issues. I would um, recommend it if you like building games, something like Civ, um, Settlers, maybe even something like SimCity. Um, so this has been Bashing, Bashing? No, this has been Banished. Uh, thanks for watching.